Welcome to the second video in our series on bradyarrhythmias and tachyarrhythmias. Now we're going to discuss another type of arrhythmia known as tachyarrhythmias, which are rapid, abnormal rhythms originating from atria or ventricles. Tachycardia is a faster than normal heart rate for the age of the child and it requires that immediate CPR be initiated. Some common signs of tachycardia include sudden collapse, respiratory distress or failure from pulmonary edema, shock with hypotension or poor end organ perfusion, and altered consciousness. Symptoms of tachycardia may include palpitations, dizziness, lightheadedness, fatigue, or fainting. There are five different types of tachycardia that we will look at. The first type is atrial flutter, which is an abnormal heart rhythm causing a fast, irregular heartbeat. It usually occurs in the atria of the heart, but this type of arrhythmia is uncommon in children. Some causes of atrial flutter include hypertension, ischemia, cardiomyopathy, or an abnormal heart valve. The next type is sinus tachycardia, which is when the rate of impulse from the SA node is elevated more than normal for the age of the child. The heart rate usually does not exceed 200 beats per minute, but can exceed 180 beats per minute in infants and 140 beats per minute in children. The P wave is normal, the PR interval is constant, and the R and R interval is variable. Some causes of sinus tachycardia are hypoxia, hypovolemia, fever, poison, metabolic stress, trauma, pain, anxiety, toxicity, and anemia. The third type is known as supraventricular tachycardia, or SVT, and this is a rapid heartbeat that starts just above the ventricles. SVT is the most common cause of tachyarrhythmia in infants that causes cardiac issues. The heart rate is higher than 200 beats per minute in infants and more than 180 beats per minute in children. The P wave is abnormal and the RR interval is constant. Some causes of SVT include AV nodal reentry, ectopic atrial focus, and accessory pathway entry. Ventricular tachycardia, or VT, starts in the ventricles. This condition is uncommon in children, but when present, VT with a pulse can cause a child's heart rate to exceed 200 beats per minute and may turn into ventricular fibrillation or pulseless VT. In VT, the P waves cannot be identified, while the T waves are opposite in polarity to the QRS complex. Some causes of VT include drug toxicity, prolonged QT syndrome, myocarditis, underlying heart disease, and electrolyte disturbances. The last type of tachycardia is called polymorphic VT, or torsade de Poin, which is when different areas in the ventricles fire fast, uncoordinated impulses. Ventricular rates range from 150 to 250 beats per minute, and the QRS complex varies in appearance. Some causes of polymorphic VT, or torsade de Poin, are diarrhea, hypomagnesemia, and hypokalemia. The proper management of tachycardia in a child begins in the same way as treatment of bradycardia in a child. As soon as you recognize that a child is experiencing tachycardia, you should immediately activate the EMS and conduct the ABC assessment by opening and supporting the child's airway, giving oxygen and or ventilation if necessary, starting chest compressions with 100 compressions per minute at a cycle of 30 compressions and two rescue breaths. Next, attach a defibrillator for children over one year old and obtain a 12-lead ECG. Then obtain vascular access and run lab tests to give more information on the child's status. You should evaluate the QRS complex and identify as either normal or wide. A normal QRS complex is defined as less than or equal to 0.08 seconds, whereas a wide QRS complex is defined as greater than 0.08 seconds. If the QRS complex is revealed as normal, then the child may be experiencing sinus tachycardia, in which case you should search for the causes and treat the child for specific symptoms that they are exhibiting. Showing a normal QRS complex may also indicate supraventricular tachycardia, in this case, you should consider vagal maneuvers, obtain vascular access, 
administer a rapid bolus of adenosine at a dose of 0.1 mg per kg via IV. You can give a second dose of 0.2 mg per kg. If the QRS complex is wide, then the child may be suffering from ventricular tachycardia, and you must treat the reversible causes, then administer the following drugs. Amiodarone at a dose of 5 mg per kg via IV over 20 to 60 minutes, or procainamide at 15 mg per kg via IV over 30 to 60 minutes. Remember that adenosine may only be administered once. Cardioversion can be attempted at 0.5 to 1 joule per kilogram and a 12 lead ECG obtained as further treatment. This was the section on bradyarrhythmias and tachyarrhythmias in our Pediatric Advanced Life Support course. Please proceed to the next section of this course and review the corresponding videos.